the middle of the turnpike was slated to be right here. Three lanes this way and three lanes that way to take all of our 10 acres from the street to about 30 feet into the woods. This would all be concrete. You need rural living to support urban living and I think it's a shame that we're still putting new alignments in because uh, we surely don't need more concrete. We need them to maintain what we've got. We've been pretty busy but I'm growing zinnias and tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and we've got a, a bunch of chickens so let's see. Oh, we've got lots. So being able to produce your own food on your own land is um, pretty important and we teach our three girls how to do it and um, I think that they feel a lot of pride in being able to raise their chickens and being able to go in the garden and get food and they understand where it comes from. It doesn't just come from the, the supermarket. We want to preserve that. When this all first happened, we had to use legal means to stop the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority because they weren't going to stop just because we told them to. And so we had to keep them out of the bond market and had to stop them. So we, we filed these lawsuits to make it apparent that, you know, we had a great legal standing. They had to stop what they were doing. But then in order to make those legal wins permanent, we had to go to the legislature and change the statute. We got a group of 45 members from diverse backgrounds. We got with some of the senators and the representatives to write our bills that we thought would put protections in place so this could never happen again. And we ended up with about 20 different bills between the Senate and the House, and we started citizen lobbying, sending one to four people up there every day to try to get them through committees, and we learned very quickly that we were outfunded by, for sure by the lobbyist groups. And uh, they put on a big fight, but we managed to get one bill all the way through, which was just vetoed by the governor on Friday. So we wrote uh, House Bill 2263 that would change in the way in which the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority Board was put together. Right now it's 100% appointed by the governor, which gives him complete executive power. So that's like saying, hey, Amy, I'm hiring you and I can fire you if you disagree with me, so you better get with the program and never disagree. And that's just what the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority does. They've only voted no three times, never um, in 10 years, it's been a complete rubber stamp board. And we felt that in order to stop something like what happened to us from ever happening again would be to make the board be appointed by the Senate, the House, and the governor, reduce their terms to six years, and force them to sign a conflict of interest statement, which says that they can't vote on anything that they have financial interest on. Because right now, there's bankers, distribution center owners that are making decisions for the OTA based on how it would financially benefit them, and that's not okay. And our governor, Kevin J. Stitt, vetoed something that would take power away from him. Correct. And he vetoed it on Friday, very late, the last day, and he said in his statement, It is unconstitutional for you to take this power away from me because the legislation, legislature has no right to tell me what I can do. And of course, we hit a nerve with him because the o Oklahoma Turnpike Authority is legislatively authorized. That's how they get their authorization. The executive power, he has nothing to do with the OTA, or he should have nothing to do with the OTA, but yet he's the one that calls the shots. He's the one that hires, he's the one that fires, and he's the one that coerces the board members to do what he wants. I don't think it's okay that he's allowed to appoint his friends and say, hey, make as much money as you want on the backs of the Oklahoma citizens without any oversight from any other legislative branch in the government. And so we have until Friday, May 26th, to get this House Bill 2263 overridden in the House and then the Senate. And so it becomes law on November 1st of 2023. Is there anything that the people can do? Like, is this a vote thing or? The people can email House Leader Charles McCall and House Floor Leader uh, John Eccles and ask them to please put House Bill 2263 on the floor to be voted on for the veto override. And contact your individual senator and representative to get su support for this, even though it passed almost unanimously the first time from the House and the Senate with only two or three nay votes. And so we have all the confidence in the world that once it gets to the floor, the, the override will happen. But politics are involved and the governor was lobbying in person against our bill two weeks ago in the Senate offices. And so we know that he, out of all the things that he's vetoed, 
this is one thing that he does not want them to override because it makes him look bad. He has a huge ego. And so we're really hoping that. And it keeps more money in his pocket and his friend's pocket. It keeps more money in his pocket. Crony capitalism at its finest with Governor Jay Stitt because all his buddies who were caught and are being caught by the Attorney General with conflicts of interest around surrounding the Gilcrease Turnpike, it's, it happens all the time. And so we want to try to avoid that in the future so our children don't have to deal with the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority like this.